It's still the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Thanks for staying with us and also thanks for joining us. Well, as always, at this point, we go through the pages of the national dailies. We call it Off the Press and G.D. Johnson joins the conversation. G.D., it's good to have you join us. Good morning, Mercy Kofi. Good morning to you and good morning to our viewers. It's nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, let's start off with the leadership newspaper. Five days to campaign, federal government, a Tiku set tone for political fireworks. Interesting caption. Lai Mohammed accuses ex-vice president of copying President Mohammed Buhari's economic playbook. You lied, apologize to Nigerians. PDP flag bearer tells minister. Keep campaign with extant laws. IGP warns politicians. And so 28 is the day that everyone's been waiting for, especially the politicians. Again, electricity workers threaten to shut down national greed. 28 die in headsmen attack and boat mishap in Benway. Abiola's widow arrested over assault on female police orderly. In New York, President Mohammed Buhari was investors, says insecurity will end soon. That's it this morning on the leadership. Let's move straight to the punch. We have some interesting stories. The lead one uh, on the front page, Atiku PDP, the Wike Makinde uh, begin campaigns Wednesday. Atiku PDP, the Makinde uh, Wike declare or uh, begin campaigns Wednesday. Writers, uh, Lamido or Lafesho, Momodu, other heavyweights, back party, preach peace. Uh, PDP governors forum to meet Ayu Atiku Okoa, say Tambuau. Wabara, or Wabara, the BOT chair. Uh, BOT meets week eight today. Rivers governor vows to remain in PDP, fight for equity. Eh? Uh, here, he from the grapevine of giving a, a nationwide broadcast tomorrow. That's how it, uh, this thing has gotten serious. A nationwide broadcast uh, tomorrow to the entire country. UNGA, Buhari Woods, Buhari Woods investor says Nigeria requires 348 trillion naira. Uh, one wonders if they want to bring the money in, uh, seeing that some investors um, are not able to get their money out. Rate hikes may trigger recession. World Bank warns FG. Uh, Dogara, Lawa, I can't, or can't rather, intimidate Tinubu on Muslim Muslim ticket. Dogara, Lawa, can't intimidate Tinubu on Muslim Muslim ticket. Nigeria needs help to tackle debt burden. That's the African Development Bank saying that electricity consumers pay 210 billion naira in three months. Uh, interesting one. Aso appeals ruling says FG has declared war. Presidential candidates signed peace pact Thursday. Military to bombard bandits asks residents to relocate. 245 killed in Kaduna community attacks says Monarch. Uh, Keridulu fumes as FG denies Omoteku firearms license and hoodlums ransack loot Ogun school pupils sent home headlines on front page of the punch. Away from the punch, the Daily Trust uh, has before us Buhari to investors, capital inflow a major challenge. Of course, uh, the president warning investors categorize our stolen crude as blood oil. Kiari is quoted underneath the board caption. Nigeria needs help to tackle debt burden. A day shina. And Mefeli, interest rate will continue to increase. And 2023, IGP puts police commanders on alert. Baza, Motaku, ESN, others from election campaigns. ASU, NITDA says IPPIS and UTAS fail Integrity test as rep summons SGF, AGF, and authors. I mean, this is really interesting because I remember when, you know, you have uh, the lecturer saying that, you know, you just actually passed the integrity test and what have you now. The report is that IPPIS and the UTAS failed integrity tests. Governor's BOT in fresh move to resolve PDP crisis. And please kill 16-year-old. Artisan injured two orders in Joss. Well, that's the much we can take this morning on the Daily Trust newspaper. And very quickly, the Nation newspaper has these headlines. Audit, federal government takes steps to deregister ASU. 
audit, FG takes steps to deregister ASU, union accused of infractions for five years. It's all about blackmail, says Osodeke. Maybe indeed they've declared war on ASU, as uh, they are saying, or as the ASU officials are saying. Omo taken call to carry weapons, says Akeridu. Um, Wyondo gun clash over riverine communities. Um, Wyondo Ogun clash over riverine communities. Beg your pardon. Tambuau is NGF interim chair as five me heads for uh, How Lagos can achieve good governance by stakeholders. Wiki to expose characters in PDP disguising as leaders. One from the Nation newspaper. Uh, so there's other stories that um, we have there. Tiko's economic blueprint won't fly, says Minister PDP APC uh, uh, have no manifesto. Or PDP APC has no manifesto or some of the headlines on the front page of the nation newspaper. Jerry Johnson, you know we'll always um, bring the ASU stories to you first because of uh, your background in the acad academics or uh, academia. Uh, so what are your thoughts on this uh, rumor that the federal government is about to deregister uh, the union? Don't forget we have CONWA already in the works. Um, they already have a website up. They were at the industrial court the other day when this uh, order was made. Um, but what the paper says, a threat by the federal government to withdraw the certification of registration, the COR, uh, of ASU, introduced a new twist to the rift uh, between the two bodies yesterday. The new twist came barely a day after uh, the National Industrial Court uh, injunction ordering the varsity workers to return to, uh, to classroom. But the paper says that um, the government threatening to withdraw this, the union's COR because of its alleged uh, failure to submit the financial reports, financial reports of its audited accounts as required by law in the last five years. Report in the last five years. Um, I think that government is just trying to use soft output meaning means uh, on the own tactics that is peculiar to military administration and the um, an authoritarian government, and this does not work. There have been various attempts in the past from government to ban us using this type of means. I, I, don't, I just don't think that our, our politicians and our public administrators learn from history. History is the best teacher. If attempt by government to do this in the past did not work. So any attempt by government to do this now will not work. I think um, using the court system, using, they tell you that the best resolution to any dispute is for parties to sit down and and agree on an issue. Even the court system will always advise you parties to go and have a dispute resolution for coming to court if the cases could be if if the issue could be resolved through um dispute resolution other than coming to court they will be they will be fine with it. I think government should just adopt an approach of engaging us looking for ways and means to have you to, to ask you to ensure that they ship their sword and this particular issue is, is resolved. Like it was pointed out in one of your reports. What is at stake is about integrity, is integrity is this. Over the years, as we have gone on strike and they've called up the strike, thinking that government will feel is not part of the bargain. But what we, have, what we have seen is government failure to feel is not part of the bargain. And there's this less determination on the part of us to ensure that um, they, they get all their demands from government. However, personally, if you ask me, I don't think that there should be an association for university lecturers. These are professionals, these are core academics. That's my personal opinion. Uh, wow. <laughs> which, uh, which, that's, why, that's, why that's so? my, because that's I don't surprising. Think, why so? I don't see, I don't, I don't, I don't think associations of um, lecturers in the university should be operating like a trade union. Using trade union tactics and the rest of that's my view. I might be wrong, but it's my own opinion. But then, um, Nigeria is where you have different types of association. Where you have Nigeria Medical Association, you have different professional bodies having medical association operating as 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 as, as labor as labor union. We also have it in our own industry too. You know, you have Nigerian Union of Journalists too. So essentially, um, it's there are so many operations when it comes to industrial relations in Nigeria, particularly when you talked about employee, em, em, employer's employee relationship. But 
most of these things were as a result of too many years that we have under military administration. So you have to have labor, you know, to deal with this, with this very special interest group, to deal with the military government, which was not democratically elected and which does not have structured institution to deal with some certain issue. And we are still suffering from that with respect to our government related to various um, professional bodies in the various industries and in the various sectors of our economy. But I think that government should just continue with the engagement. Um, you can involve traditional rulers with them. You can involve the parents, parents of students all across. First and foremost, these lecturers themselves to our parents, they have their own children too. And most of us should not forget that most of these lecturers do have children in federal university. So what is affecting other people's children is also affecting their children. And those that do not have children have grandchildren that are in these various schools. So, you see, there's more to it than meets the eye. But my candid advice is that using this soft approach means and all of this underarm tactics that you have with the dictatorial government, authoritarian government, and military government will not work. Will not, will not, it didn't work in the past. Government had been attempts to prescribe NLC, to prescribe Pegasus, to prescribe Nupeng, to prescribe ASU, you recall. In fact, the democracy we are enjoying today was as a result of government attempt to stifle the labor union in Nigeria. And rather than stifle them, for the federal government further reinforced this association in, in their determination to fight for what they believe in. Well, um, let's quickly uh, look at the leadership newspaper. The very interesting headline. It talks about, you know, just five days to the campaign and the federal government and Atiku have set a tone for political f uh, fireworks. Now, um, there's been an accusation by Lai Mohammed uh, saying that the former uh, vice president copied President Mohammed Buhari's economic playbook in talking about provision of, a, uh, you know, infrastructure or what have you, just... A replication, but 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 do you think that that's the case? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, look, uh, I'd allow you to share your thoughts, really. Well, um, if if indeed that who copied them, um, uh, President Barry's blueprint, what's the big deal about that? In fact, Lai Mohammed should be glad about that. That the opposition is trying to use the template of what they are using, and um, which should also be good for their government if indeed. Uh, you want continuity of project. What we have seen as a challenge in Nigeria is that when government coming in from the same party, they abandoned the project that was embarked upon by their predecessor, and then they go on, on their own on their own projects. So we don't have continuity. Uh, besides that fact, we don't know the blueprint which Lai Mohammed is talking about. I don't know the blueprint. I, I don't know whether you have seen the blueprint or whether. Um, um, Kofi Chua has seen the blueprint. I have not seen the blueprint of what he's talking about. And then even if he's talking about the blueprint, we have not seen the reality of the blueprint on the ground in, in, in Nigeria. So as far as I'm concerned, it's just purely campaign rhetoric and looking for re relevance. How many times have you seen Lai Mohammed in the news lately? He's been out of circulation. He's been out of news um, lately. He's not even in the campaign. He's not even in the campaign team of the, of the APC. You can imagine if the Minister of Information and Culture um, is of, 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 of a sitting government is not in the campaign team of the presidential campaign team of his party. It tells you a lot about that character. GDA, um, I, I like us to talk about this again. I mean, so what should uh, be the blueprint of uh, this political aspirant, presidential aspirant or flag bearers of different parties? Because we're talking about the Probably. issues that we're faced with. I mean, uh, if, if someone says they are existing because they want to create, I mean, they want to ensure that their job creation, uh, provision of infrastructure and all of that, are this not really the problems that we're faced with? Should it be something abstract? Are we expecting anything different from what the... So what, what, what we should do when we go into the campaign season, we start on Wednesday, is to go into the specifics. You can't just tell us you provide infrastructure. What is infrastructure? That's big. You see, that's 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 an objective. You make it, you turn your objective into a goal. A goal is a measurable objective that have timelines for deliverables, that are benchmarked for evaluation. So we ask you, you want to create jobs. How many jobs are you going to create? 
okay, through which sector? You give us sector by sector analysis. In the educational sector, in the oil and gas sector, in this sector, these jobs are going to create, and this are how we are going to be. You know, knowing what to say is important. Knowing how to say it is vitally important. What you are going, you can state what you want to do. Everybody can state it. But tell us how you are going to do what you want to do. And these are the key questions we should ask. And it's very simple. It's responsibility for you and I, Messi, and Kofi to ask them to put in, to put into question, to apply the principle of five W's and H into what they are going to do. Ruja Kipling said, if you apply the five W's and H, which is the what, the who, the where, the where, the how, and the why, to any issue, it will lay the issue bare. If you throw that issue on any person, on any issue, it will answer all questions. That's the question we need to ask when it comes to the, oh, I have done this in the past. No, we are not interested in the past. What are you going to do in the future? I've done this. Uh, this is my economic blueprint. I've done this in Lagos. Fantastic. Journalists will go. We review what has been done in Lagos. I've done this in, in Anambra State. Journalists will go and review what you have done. I've done this in Adamawa. I've done this. <coughs> Journalists will go. We review it and we throw spotlight into it. Our responsibility is to question the intention of those that want to govern us so that we can throw such light into it. We can make it clear that an ordinary eye can see what is in their blueprint. Okay, Jimmy Johnson, responsibility. very quickly, please, That's because of time. Uh, uh, the, the leadership we saw on the front page talking about the tone being set by PDP uh, to go ahead of uh, the uh, campaign's beginning. But on the Daily Trust, very quickly on the Daily Trust, um, in a few sentences, the paper is telling us the IGP, uh, whilst the, the leadership is talking about political fireworks, the IGP doesn't want to see the fireworks explode into something else or metamorphose into a bomb. So a paper says, says the IGP is putting police commanders on alert. Uh, it's his bad Omotekun ESN and others from election campaigns, not just from carrying weapons, from election campaigns. He's warning politicians against violence and hate speech. Um, uh, is this a real, real issue, real threat ahead of the uh, commencement of campaigns for the 2023 election? We still have the vestiges. We still have, I've told you, we still have the vestiges of military, uh, the characterization of militarization in our political speech, even in our administrative speech. In our public service speeches by respected people, they are not democratic. They are not the, the democratic culture. Have not been embraced by people that we have given authority of the state to in Nigeria. We are still operating a civilian administration, not a democratic administration. People have just changed the clothes they are wearing into civilian a civilian dress, civil dresses, but they don't know what obtains in in in, in, demo, in the democratic culture. Why would the IGP be warning, warning people? There's no need for that, for that statement. All he needs to do is to just put in place his own past, in his own, his, his own structure, and anyone that goes outside of the law, he prosecute. But we have a lot of grandstanding from different types of people. You have seen the grandstanding of the Inspector General of Police. You still see the grandstanding of, of ICPC. You see the grandstanding of EFCC. Agencies that should just go about doing their normal business but because they want to be in the conversation, they want to be in the news, they will gather themselves together and they will make some statement. Statement that you think should not come from people that are operating in democratic in a democratic space. Now, when he's saying that Amoteko should not carry firearms, you will be shocked that you have private bodyguards of the political class carrying firearms during this 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 particular election. You have different vigilante groups across across the nation across the length of of this nation, carrying firearms. Even some don't even have to ask for the permission to carry it because they cannot be prosecuted. We've seen cases whereby uh, government officials, state governors, and people that have authority have justified some people carrying firearms to okay. protect to protect their business. So interesting, it's, interesting. It's, it's, Very well. We would like to thank you, J.D. Johnson, for your time. Um, let's see Let's see how it pans out. We have a few days to go before the campaigns begin. Uh, and NS and we can't wait, um, but we'd like to uh, call it today with you at this juncture. Thank you so much for your kind time. It's a pleasure to be with you, Kofi, right. and make sure that um, 
you enjoy yourself over this weekend. Fantastic. Before the fireworks you too. start. I need to make it. Before the fireworks <laughs> start on Wednesday. I'm telling you. We can't wait. All right. Um, uh, we have a break. Of course, I uh, will bring you um, a recap of what happened today in history. When we come back, we'll dive straight into a first major conversation. Please stay with us. <laughs> 